to welcome us to this great occasion, uh, the centenary celebration of the most missionary sisters of the Most Holy Rosary. Uh, we are in church when I think enough has been said about this great congregation for its formation in 1924 by our own and through the years, they were able to continue with so much of its charity work. And for most persons here who may not be aware, the one that mostly interests me was the role the missionary sisters of the Most Holy Rosary played during the Nigerian Civil War. Because it was one of the notable congregations or institutions that or through which much of the charity works and other charitable acts were extended to the Biafrans. And for all, each and every one of us here, who are part of the Biafran war then, our as it were, we deeply appreciate the role the missionary sisters of the most holy Rosary we played in making sure that the people were not exterminated during the war. So I think we deserve a very huge round of applause for that. It is a on record that through the congregation of the most holy Rosary sisters, we have been able to instill discipline and contribute to your own quota in advancing education in our great country. 
if there is any if you should actually talk of any evidence of such great war. I think the institution we are we are today celebrating the centenary celebration, the centenary anniversary of your communication. Bears eloquent testimony. Bears eloquent testimony to the huge contribution of the missionary sisters of the whole Soviet I always say, when we talk about centenary celebration, of course, 100 years is not 100 months. Then is 100 weeks. And we are sure that through the blessed intervention of our modern men, you've been able to persevere, you've been able to endure. Because I know very well that the challenges and the task you've been able to surmount for these past hundred years has not been an easy one. But you've stayed tolerant, and I know you have a whole lot to contribute. Of course, certainly, uh, I don't know if there is anybody here that will be alive when you celebrate the baby 200 years. <laughs> Definitely. None of us here will be alive to witness it. If there's anybody that wants to witness, I don't think I want to witness the 200 year celebration. But the fact remains that I am certain and I'm sure that your congregation will equally raise godly women, godly women or young women then, who will continue to uphold the ideals and tenets of your congregation. So I say a huge congratulations, a huge congratulations. Uh, and we look forward to uh, continuing to partner with you and to support you. On behalf of myself, uh, my great partner, Progressive Grand Alliance, will continue to support all your charitable works. And we say may God continue to be with you, may God continue to bless you, May God continue to reward the missionary sisters of the Most Holy Rosary for the noble work you are doing in Nigeria and world over. Thank you very much. And once more, please welcome to this occasion. I didn't like the record. I didn't like Amen. Thank you. At Holy Rosary College, Owami, Enugu, by Ifeiwan Mwebunam, MSHR, Regional Leader, South Nigeria. Their lordships all that go. So, Dr. Barrister Peter Mba, ably represented by Aka is a Aka. May God bless you for coming. We also recognize His Excellency, Mr. Peter Obi, ably represented by architect Calistus Ilozomba. Thank you for coming. We also recognize the chairman of this occasion, Barista Sly Ezokemwa. Thank you for accepting to share this noble occasion. Consecrated persons here, our distinguished guests, on behalf of the missionary sisters of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary worldwide, I bring you greetings of peace and joy as I welcome you to the celebration of the centenary of our foundation. 
Thank you for making our time to be here with us today. We deeply appreciate your presence. Thank you, Emerson. Today is very remarkable and memorable for us because it is on this very day, the 7th of March, 1924, that the first seven members of the congregation left the Dominican Convent in Cabra, Dublin, Ireland, to open our first convent in the Shangra County Cabra in preparation for their missionary journey. So today we are 100 years to reign. This is Thanksgiving of amazing grace, amazing grace, amazing grace, Thanksgiving of amazing grace, God bless the to what was planted and watered. And so our gratitude goes first and foremost to the Almighty God. May his praises resound in both heaven and earth for what he did for our congregation and what he has done through our congregation for these hundred years. And who brought us into existence in 1924 as his co missionaries? This century of our foundation is being celebrated in all the countries where we are on mission. But it is very significant in southern Nigeria because Bishop Shanahan founded the congregation initially for the upliftment of the dignity of southern Nigerian women when there was no single girl school in Igbo land. The reality that there are so many women of high repute from southern Nigeria who have made significant contribution to our country, to humanity and the world at large. Some as notable ministers, past ministers, first ladies, directors of government palastatas and religious women implies that today's celebration is part of dream and true. By the grace of God, the congregation has gone beyond what it was intended for. The mustard seed has grown with branches in 14 countries of the world. Cameroon, Ghana, Ethiopia, Kenya, Liberia, Sierra Leone, South Africa, Zambia, Nigeria, United States of America, Brazil, Mexico, Ireland, and United Kingdom. And we have membership from 14 nationalities. The sisters share God's love through the following ministries, education, health, community development, human rights, refugee support, working with migrants, environmental sustainability, addressing human trafficking with particular attention on women, youth, and children. Countless men, women, and youth from these countries continue to trace the path of development from childhood up to their present social status, to their encounter with some or other Holy Rosary sisters in our different ministries and communities. You will see some of our ministries in our new book, The Centenary Blossom. Please do not go without picking a copy. We look at the past with so much gratitude for our several foundation members, our 10 first prophet sisters, and our early members on whose shoulders we stand and who have gone ahead of us for their entire life live in zealous service of others in imitation of the missionary spirituality of Bishop Joseph Shanahan, our founder. It is their labor and their sweat that we are celebrating today because this milestone was never arrived at on a platter of gold. I recall the words of Bishop Shanahan to the first seven postulants hundred years ago, which is so real in the lives of our first and early missionaries, and not less today. He said, there are before you, as before all missionaries, sufferings and trials. But remember, it is Christ himself who sweats in our sweat, 
who burns in our fever, who aches in our tired limbs, who continues his sufferings and ours. You do not know the millions of souls that will be saved because you are here today, because you are beginning a new sisterhood in Christ. We can never forget how our sisters refused to leave Nigeria during the Civil War, working with the Holy Ghost Fathers. They brought relief to the people as well as keeping their hope alive. They also did similar things in other, the, the other mission lands when there were war, especially Sierra Leone. We are going to call on their sacrificial land, and it is our desire that by the grace of God, the generation coming after us will also celebrate our own contribution to the mission of Christ. Presently, we are making honest efforts to live the present with passion so as to keep the life of our spirituality and charism burning. Our charism invites us to share the good news with everyone, but especially with the poor, oppressed and exploited, through our ministries. And so, in our various schools, we invest a lot on scholarship. This is to help the indigent students access quality education, discover their talents, and take their place in society. He would not have evangelized all of us here present, nor founded MSHR, if he remained in the farm with his parents. In keeping with our charism, this centenary day, we want to contribute to breaking the cycle of poverty in our country by offering scholarship to train and set up at least 100 women in vocational skills. We also want to offer scholarship to 100 young people in Holy Rosary Girls Secondary School in addition to those already on scholarship. This is one aspect of our centenary project, and we invite you to be part of it. It will take around 1.7 million to train a girl in vocational skills for two years with practicals necessary. And it will take around 3 million to take a girl from JS1 to SS3. If you feel called to participate in any way, kindly let us know. You may decide to take on full scholarship or past scholarship. Our mission, both in Nigeria and other parts of the world, has been made possible thanks to our benefactors, partners, and collaborators who have supported us through the years. Their support, both financially and otherwise, enable us to reach out to the poor. Prominent among them is the government of Ireland through Mission Kara, a body set up to support the Irish missionaries. Other prominent ones are World Mercy Fund, Germany and Austria, NLW, Germany, Aid to Church in Need, and other donors, both in Europe and America. We will appreciate this kind of support and partnership with our government to enhance our capacity to continue to reach out to the poorest of the poor. Thanks to our collaborators, associates, our staff in different ministries, parents, students, priests and religious, with whom we work, and all those who have supported us in one way or the other, these hundred years. Please continue to support us. Missionary Sisters of the Holy Road have an ongoing project with the people of Upo Edogri in MNA Enugu, a settlement where people suffer severe hunger chronic eye problems, lack of water supply, and live in mud houses, lack of decent uh, housing, and lack of basic amenities. Through the support of our partners like World Mercy and NLWU, we have been able to sink more holes for them, and the eye treatment program will soon begin. Enormous support is still needed to make the community livable. We've been able to reach out to them and provide balanced diets for them because they live only on the carbohydrates. For instance, they need decent houses, basic social amenities like electricity, primary health care facility or health coach, good road, empowerment for livelihood, education for their children. We beckon on the government and all of you gathered here today to help us realize this project that we transform the lives of these children of God. For us, education is integral to evangelization. As we care for our founder who says in his own words, it is better to know God than to know book. And our early sisters too. It's very important for us and our founder say 
May every child who enter the gate of Holy Rosary School one day enter the gate of heaven. And so, one of the ways we have continued to live our spirituality and charism in today's world is to do what we call zero tolerance to Islam practice, especially in Nigeria, where it seems to be ingrained. We work with our teachers to promote zero tolerance and we guide our students with compassion because sometimes they try to envy other students who go to Miracle Center. But after going to universities, they come back to thank us. What many of them bear witness and challenge the corrupt system wherever they found themselves. One of such remarkable ones was ex Rosie student who made notable impact in challenging and addressing corruption in Nigeria was made Professor Dora To support us in this cause so that our society we produce citizens who are reliable and who can challenge injustice. Because we see how Nigeria is today is because of education that was not well handled. We have lawyers who can compromise and doctors who can compromise. The congregation has been so involved in pastoral and development program for inception, following requests from people. When an Odyssey from Usoka to Enugu was, was, was moved from Usoka to Enugu, our first novitiate became a retreat and conference center. Many priests, religious, and other lay people avail of the center for retreats and other spiritual exercises. Other programs in this center include counseling, training in human development, child safeguarding, leadership training, and care of the earth. For over 20 years, students from HRC, Enugu, Holy Rosary Girls College from Sube and Wabalada, College of Immaculate Conception, CIC, St. Teresa's College in Soka, have been availing of leadership training program for their school prefects. They have always enjoyed this training, which enhanced their skill for leadership, not only now in school, but all through life. One major challenge which has been echoed by each group that use our facility is lack of conducive and spacious repertory to contain the number of people who come for training, retreats, and other programs. Sometimes people eat in batches because the repertory was, was made to contain 25 to 30 people. But now we host sometimes 150 to 200 groups. This threatens the quality of the service we give. To address this challenge, we propose to construct a repertory that will contain 200 people. The total cost of the construction is 250 million, given to the currency devaluation. Please help us to make this project possible. We will serve you and our students better when it is completed. Finally, we thank you once more for choosing to stay with us today, irrespective of how tight your schedules are. Thank you, especially to the Cent Centenary Committee, who worked tirelessly to make this day possible. May your presence here today be a remarkable contribution to the continued mission of the congregation in the spirit of Bishop Joseph Shanahan. Our prayer is that this celebration will be a source of renewed missionary zeal to our vocation ministry and that the light which the Holy Spirit has kindled in our world through the presence of MSHR will continue to shine and light up every dark area of our world. We also ask our founder, Bishop Shanahan, and our early sisters to pray for us so that the mission of reconciliation will be enkindled in the world today where there is so much crisis, war, hatred, and division. May the grace of the centenary celebration engender peace, justice, spirit of forgiveness and reconciliation in our country and the entire universe. Bishop Shanahan said, We hurt each other by men nothings, but always forgive, forgive and forgive because it is the Christ-like thing to do. And so I ask forgiveness for all the people we might have caught in the process of carrying out our ministries. Please forgive us. May everyone here present and your loved ones be richly blessed and protected by God. May we all let go of past thoughts and pain and be renewed in the spirit of the gospel. 
so that at the end of our lives here on earth, we shall all be gathered in heaven. May Mary, Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, whose name we bear, intercede for you and your loved ones, and our beloved country, Nigeria. Amen. Mr. Chairman, sir, permit me to tell you that Brigadier General Bona, the wife is here now, talking about Lady Uche Ubuja. You are welcome.
justice and all will be long. We will walk with others to share in Christ's mission of love. Reconciling hearts, be a man of brotheries. We will walk with others to share in Christ's mission of love. So the call we have, I want to know if it's not me, Introduction. The book under review is titled Centenary Blossoms, and the subtitle is An Account of 100 Years of Missionary Service, 1924 to 2024. The Missionary Sisters of Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary. To start with the title, What My Centenary Blossoms Mean? The dictionary defines blossoms as a flower or a mass of flowers, especially on a tree or bush. So we are talking of 100 flowers on the Holy Rosary stalk. Remembering, of course, the rosary itself is a flower, the rose flower. No wonder the subtitle of the book is an account of 100 years of missionary service from 1924 to 2024 of the Missionary Sisters of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary. Reading the book is like going on mission with the Missionary Sisters to the different places where they have been on mission. This invariably means sharing in their mission and the graces therein. The book, it can be said, has been written by every Holy Rosary Sister. This is because it is made up of the missionary experiences of the sisters 
in different regions of the congregation through the years. These stories are compiled and edited by Kathleen Harley, Maureen O'Keefe, and Mary Gallagher. Bearing in mind the concept of storytelling, the book is not divided into chapters, but instead into themes and events portraying the life of the congregation at a particular time and place. An overview of the book. The book contains 235 pages. The font size makes it eye-friendly and easy to read. There is the inclusion of beautiful, appropriate pictures, which helps one to connect more deeply with the stories. The strength of the book. W. H. Aldean states that man is a history-making creature who can neither repeat his past nor leave it behind. The book under review is a history of missionary sisters of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary, which cannot be left behind. For the Holy Rosary sisters, this book is a compendium of the memory of the congregation. It is a legacy to pass on to future generations of who we have been through the years, how we see ourselves, our identity, and how we have lived all this out through the years. Herein, one can spot our unique traits, charisms, and spirituality, lived out at different times by different people and in different places and situations. For all that's not Holy Rosary Sisters, but associated with them, the book presents the story of the life and struggle of people you love and admire. It is impossible to read the book without being touched by the missionary zeal and passion of Bishop Joseph Shanahan, which has continued in his daughters, the missionary sisters of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary, for 100 years. One cannot read the book without having one's faith deepened and strengthened. This is because for all of us Christians, Catholics especially in this part of the world, it is the story of our beginnings, of our fathers and mothers in the faith. Indeed, the story of Christianity in southeastern Nigeria cannot be told without the mention of Bishop Shanahan and his daughters, the missionary sisters of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary, on whose sweat, blood, and bones the Christian church today and tomorrow has been built. The book presents the story of how God's part working in us can do infinitely more than what we can ever ask for or even imagine through His grace at work in us. The drawbacks. The main drawback I see in the narration is that due to the constraints of time and the fact that it is only one book and not in volumes, the stories are not as detailed as one would want them to be. The contents of the book. The preliminary section of the book contains the pictures of Bishop Joseph Shanahan, Bishop Patrick Finnegan, and Mother M. Conceal, Flynn, O.P. This is followed by letters of appreciation, the foreword, and an introduction. After this, instead of the usual chapters or parts the book is divided into, this book continues seamlessly from one age of the congregation to another, under the following themes, foundation, significant congregational moments from 1924 to 2024, mission agentes, which refers to missions to foreign lands. This is presented according to the years of beginning of the foundation in the following sequence, Southern Nigeria, 1928, South Africa, 1940, Sierra Leone, 1948, and from there to Guinea, 1995. USA, 1954. Cameroon, 1956. Kenya, 1956. Benue, Nigeria, 1957. Zambia, 1963. Brazil, 1966. Ireland, England, Scotland, 1970. Ethiopia, 1975. Ghana, 1975. Mexico, 1992, Liberia, 2006, and non-foundation mission areas from 1968 to 2019. It also contains partnership mission, future missions, afterward, acknowledgement, and appendix.
The writing I employed in the book is storytelling, like an old woman narrating to her children the story of her 100 years of existence, her achievements, her challenges, her present reality, her future hopes. First, the story begins with a foundation decade. This presents the needs that inspired Bishop Joseph Shanahan, CSSP, to found the congregation. He was quoted as writing an article in 1921 that without women missionaries, the young girl and women are inevitably neglected. This immediately gives us an insight into the person and character of Shanahan and his concern for the whole flock entrusted to his care. It was his passion for the totality of the body of Christ that even though after many dioceses in Ireland turned down his request to found the new missionary congregation in their diocese, he continued exploring alternatives until Bishop Patrick Finnegan of Kilmore Diocese in early October 1921 gave his consent that a new sisterhood could be founded in his diocese. Immediately, Bishop Joseph Shanahan set out to work organizing the smooth takeoff of the new sisterhood. The Dominican sisters of Cabra, whom he had requested for assistance to form the sisters, expressed their availability. Father P.J. Whitney, one of the first assistant priests from Ireland, who volunteered to go out to Nigeria with Shanahan. From this humble beginning, the book proceeds to account significant congregational move moments from 1924 to 2024. And these include the arrival of the sisters to Nigeria, the death of Shanahan on the 25th of December 1943 in Kenya, the Nigerian Civil War, closure of the house, the mother house in Kileshangra in 1985, amongst others. The theme mission addresses takes up each region of the congregation and celebrates her members and their missionary activities. Each apostolate is mentioned with the aid of pictures explained. From mission agendas, the book moves to non-foundation mission areas to look at areas in different parts of the world where missionary sisters of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary never opened a foundation but moved with compassion at the needs of the people there sent members to help. The situations necessitating this were mainly incidents of war, famine, shortage of personnel and other humanitarian crises. These places include Sao Tome, Gabon, Malawi, Tanzania, Mozambique, Uganda, Sudan, Rwanda, Somalia, among others. Immediately after the known foundation mission areas, cognizance is taken of different persons, non-governmental organizations, and congregations that the missionary sisters of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary have worked with through the years. Each is named. The nature of relationship and activities carried out, explained and affirmed. Typical to any anniversary in which one does not look at the past and present only, but projects to the future, the next thing focus on the future mission of the congregation, which links so beautifully with the afterward and by way of advice, says that the direction of the, the congregation faces today at the beginning of the second century of its existence is the same that it faced 100 years ago, to go beyond ourselves and our cultures. With a passionate desire to share the gospel message of reconciliation, healing, service, and love to those whom we are sent. The acknowledgement comes in to express gratitude to all who contributed to putting the book together. The last things are the two appendixes. Appendix 1 gives the list of all the Holy Rosary Sisters from 1924 to 2024, while the Appendix 2 lists the countries where our sisters are buried. Personally, I feel deeply touched by the two appendixes. They connect us with all Holy Rosary sisters gone before us, who today certainly are celebrating with us in heaven and interceding for us. 
It also supposed to show that no Holy Rosary sister is forgotten or will ever be forgotten by the congregation. In conclusion, the book Centenary Blossoms is an account of the 100 years in existence of the missionary sisters of the Holy Rosary. In other words, an account of their stewardship to God and humanity, of how they have lived the first 100 years of their existence as a congregation. Going by the accounts presented in this book, one cannot help but call them 99%. From the first perspective, the book is a celebration of God's power at work in witness as portrayed in the challenging situations under which the congregation began and under which, in spite of all odds, has continued to thrive and will live to celebrate 200 years in existence, God willing. I hereby present to you the book. His Excellency Mr. Peter O.B., the chairman of the occasion, the Reverend Sister Head, people, I salute you. Because may I be on the existing protocol so that I will uh, take lesser time. I bring you greetings from the Governor of Enugu State, His Excellency Dr. Peter Ndubi Simba. He asked me to grievously apologize for his inability to be here. His interest to be here is anchored on the premise that HRC has become an iconic institution of pride to Enugu State, Igbo land, and indeed Nigeria. Thank you. The education and training provided here by the instrumentality of the missionary sisters of the Holy Rosary have proven to be of supreme quality that any parent across the country would wish to have his or her daughter in this school. Nigerians must be grateful to the missionary sisters of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary. Nigerians continue to be grateful to the congregation for elegant and noble activities during the difficult days of Nigeria. The pride rests on the quality of leaders and professionals in Nigeria and other crimes that have been produced from this institution. Teachers, medical doctors, scientists, economists, architects, lawyers, journalists, accountants here present, politicians, just to mention a few from this college, are often iconic and exemplary, winning awards and laurels. It is not to be taken for granted as the church has kept faith with the ideals of the institution founded through the Holy Rosary Sisters by the noble ideas of Bishop Jules and Shanahan some hundred years ago. I thank the church most profoundly. I thank the principals and teachers and equally the students, old, and girl, old girls and new ones alike down the years for their efforts at keeping the flag flying. Enugu State places high premium on education, and that explains the 33% allocation to education in this year's budget. In modesty, this is the highest allocation to education in this state and presumably in Nigeria. Further underscores our resolve to provide modern education of internet-based learning, ICT, AI, and all. This smart school Smart education idea shall equip the children from primary to tertiary class and even beyond. We have just begun. The state shall continue to collaborate with private partners, especially the church, to ensure that every child in Enugu State receives the best there is in modern education. Finally, I felicitate with sisters of the Holy Rosary on the occasion of their centenary celebration. I also offer the goodwill of His Excellency to the teachers and students of this college. With the words of today's gospel, I commission you to go out and continue to bear fruits. Fruits that will last to make our society a better place. Once again, thank you for inviting our beloved governor to this occasion. And I request the sister to in time take some copies of this book to come forward to His Excellency so that he can do what he is up to do. On my own part as Commissioner for Information, I will take some copies for an undisclosed song. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you. Cash. Be
who changed the political topography of Nigeria and came up with what they called P2B tsunami. The LP presidential candidates, whose sister is a reverend sister, whose brother is a reverend father, whom I will call reverend presidential candidates. Every represented by his commissioner for eight years for works in Alhambra State, a knight of St. John International, or a knight I know, I think St. Mulumba, uh -huh. a knight of St. Mulumba, talking about engineer, architect, sir, Calistus Ilozumba, to give us a presidential in parenthesis. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, um, you were discussing this event with Indian Akwadi and uh, Eko Gwe Tiwese, the Peter is now a politician. I, I heard him say, initially, he didn't accept for the politician, but uh, three days ago I listened to him on television. And uh, he was saying that we will be politicians. So I knew he had not accepted the politician. So we joined him to appreciate what he's doing. Um, he called me yesterday. I was supposed to be here because the sisters, we were dealing with them. They invited us, myself and my partner, to be part of what they are doing. So yesterday he called me and said that. He has been part of what they are doing, but unfortunately he couldn't be here today. But I should please add to what I was, whatever I was doing to come and represent him. Um, well, the, the story of P2B is very clear to everybody in Nigeria. Like uh, they said, they have changed the face of politics here. So we know what politics was, what it had done, even at Adam Boyce's level. Now we are taking it to the national level. And, uh, yeah, things have changed. You no longer can do things. You no longer can do things any way you like in politics now. And that people are asking questions. So we appreciate what Peter has been able to do in politics in Nigeria. Now, I want to avoid keeping you here. Uh, what he told me, when he said I should come, I asked him for everyone who was my boss for eight years. And I work very close with him, I know him very well. So I asked him, like, okay, what do I tell the sister? He laughed, I said, well, uh, like I've been talking with the sister, Martina, who is the only sister here. But when I get there, that, uh, I should get, I understand what they are doing, and let them put a package of what they are doing, I bring it to him. That's what I'm saying. Thank you so much. Only my blessing. But I'm a woman and then wake up. I can't go to go to the go to the as much as possible to pray for you. Uh, just is a very of whole congregation. Just is one that has contributed immensely to the advancement of education in Nigeria. And we continue to support you. For me, I am very passionate about what you say about the vocational education. Uh, say you want to train 
we were from young ladies, we were to a curriculum with necessary skills, and at the same time, he had the necessary drive. Ah, father. <laughs> So, for me, it may interesting to us that the organization of the National Chairman of Africa, one of the innovative things we did was to set up the Africa Foundation. And part of what we do is human capital development, trying to equip people with necessary skills and empower them the people we can, especially those people that are part of the most vulnerable in the society. We will try as much as possible to partner with fellows of learning, good lower and higher learning, and to contribute our quota in you know, advancing their work. No, 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 please. Don't stop it. Yes. So, sister, like I say, uh, on our part as a political party, who is the mentality of our foundation, we will partner with you and we will look we will look at our budget and see how many young people who can actually facilitate their training and empower them. <laughs> then again, uh, just like uh, the former Commissioner for Work and Ambrose has said, uh, the only way that we witnessed last year has introduced some sanity in our political system. And we, in Africa, being the political party that you used to govern and Ambrose, has decided to take the lead. Part of what we do is to try as much as possible to uh, change the mind and conduct of office holders. And one of the stipulations we have made is for every person elected or appointed by the bottom of Africa, we have banned public announcement of donation, whatever it is, so that we don't put people in unnecessary pressure. So for me, I cannot be the national chairman and make up the nation that come here to break it. But you can be very sure that we are going to contribute immensely in all the things we bring back. So uh, if you ask the Reverend Sister, uh, the principal of the school, uh, we've been doing you know, uh, some donations that we thought did the last time, even though quietly, and we have just redeemed it. I think I redeemed it today. And we'll continue to contribute and partner with you. So I will come, with, I will come to you and we'll have a very hearty discussion. I will see areas where Africa as a political party can partner with what you are doing. So thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. I'm Anandi Igwe. I'm only hanging out from some of our leaders. And as a public pronouncement of cash, on a super
that I know the Bible in and out. And all of us will pray this prayer together. And the prayer goes this way. Surely, his goodness and mercy shall follow this congregation. You shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. chosen to coordinate the raffle draw. We have uh, five consolation prizes and the three major prizes. The first prize, which is the saloon car, the car is parked here. The second prize, deep freezer, which is here. 
the top prize washing machine and the five consolation prizes. So eight in number. And by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we have chosen these little innocent children to help us make this divine selection. That's what I call it, divine selection. So that once they pick, we ratify and confirm. Then the person becomes the winner. Once they pick, we ratify and confirm, and the person becomes the winner. And we shall begin from the five consolation prizes. After picking the five, then we spin the machine. The third prize will be picked. We spin it again. The second prize will be picked. Then we spin it yet again. Then comes the first and the ultimate prize. So these will be the modality. We have four of them. We shall make use of the four to pick for all of them. I have the key. I have the key. So after rolling it, we open it. When we open it, then it will be picked. So we begin with the five consolation prizes. The first five consolation prizes. Five consolation prizes. So, yeah, pick one. Mogu Antonia, number 10, Odumukwe Street, number 08067100288, Mogu Antonia C. This is the first consolation prize. Odele Thomas Obunna, Odele Thomas Obunna, 19. Kenneth HFU AI Adele Thomas Obunna Oge Chuku Oge Chuku Samson 08162141658 that's the phone number, the third consolation prize. Consolation Prize, Ogulu Oledo, Canada, 080-332-80336, Ogulu Oledo. Wachupu Chinaza, number 18, Akai Street. Phone number 081 060 229488. 081 Akai Street. So we are done with the five consolation prizes. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. I started. Put back a bit.
So we shall lock it once more. After picking the third prize, we'll lock it again, spin again, pick the second prize, we'll lock it again, we spin, then the final and the ultimate prize, which is the Salon Capartier. So, we have, it is time to pick the third, the third prize. Ah, wait, wait, we'll carry you up. Keep your hand inside. Good boy. This is the third prize, which is the washing machine. Ayongo, Stella. Ihako Oka 090-669-03-975. Anyo Gustela. So we spin again for the second prize. Time for the second prize, which is the deep freezer. Uh, big one. Big one. The second prize, Father Clement Edge. Father Clement Edge. Zero nine zero three zero nine seven zero seven four nine. Second prize, which is deep freezer. Father Clement Edge. So it is time for the first and ultimate prize. Roll it very, very well. The Holy Spirit will speak in a while through this innocent child here. It's okay. Yes. So, bring the child yeah, pick one. Yeah, pick one. Pick one paper. Take one. Take one. Take one. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. pick one. Pick one. Put him inside. Put him inside. Put him inside. Put him Big one. Big one, big one. Bring one, bring one. Hello, Michael. Enugu 080-37-167940. Hello, Michael. Enugu 080-37-167940.
4-0. This is the first prize and the winner of the Saloon Cup. Eloka Michael, 080 1679470 
The next on the list is Okoye Favor Oninechi, Godfrey Okoye. The next is Agu Mako Chuku Emanuela, Daughters of Divine Love. The next is SJK Ifama Vera, the Immaculate Heart. Coming next is Sozio Kochi Som Stephanie, Daughters of Divine Love. The next winner is Nzei Okelo Owoma Christopher, Daughters of Divine Love. The next is Obia Obi Ogolu or Masirichi Rita, Godfrey Okoye. The next on the list is Okolo Chine Cherem E, Daughters of Divine Love. Next on the list is Okoye Esther Ipoma, Godfrey Okoye. Please let me thank Sir Saona, who is going to Akasmia, is going to take the next presentation. Uh, please, Idoko Lucy Chioma, Osisa Tech Girls, the, la the first three winners. Number three, we go with 20k. Number two, we go with 50k. And number one will go with the laptop. So we are going to call the third winner. The third number. Yeah. Come closer. You know the mom. Come closer. The third winner is Ukwan Ichijin Dudaminik. Godfrey Okoye. Godfrey Okoye. Ukwan is going home with 20,000 cash. You can see the check being presented to, uh, to him. And this is as good as having cash with you. Yes. Congratulations. Okay, sir. We are good. We are good. Then we need the second winner is Mwanuvu, Victoria Ifechuku, Daughters of Divine Love. She's going to go home with 50,000. The key prize goes to Eza Divine Favor, as in the Osisa Tech Congress College. She is going home with a laptop. Eza Divine Favor, as in the Osisa Tech Girls. She is going home with a brand new laptop. Which, if she's not there, the next winner is Eza Nichiamaka, HRC Nsube. The next winner is Oka for Munachi, HRC Nsube. Be careful. The next is Chijindo. Please look this way. Look this way. The next winner is Udawa College. HRC Enubu. She is followed by OKK Rita. HRC Sube. Chisindi, yeah. please come forward to take your, your prize. Chisindi is from HRC Enugu. The next is Oku Dili Goodness. HRC Enugu.
My name is Dr. Victoria from Delta Sub-Silent Engineering. This is the prize I won from the Bishop Shanahan competition. I went to the I'm very grateful, first of all, to God for giving me the grace to get to this competition. And second of all, I'm grateful to my school for bringing me up, teaching me, taking me among those who represent school in this competition, and lots more. I also thank my parents for their financial support and the rest of them. Thank you. Nestor Sylvia, HRC Sube. HRC Enugu. You be by no clapping. Can't we celebrate these children? It's an intellectual exercise. They came out top. It's not just something that is done like that, it's a competition. The third prize winner is Eze Wurusomto HRC Sube. She's going home with 20k. This is Sube people. Oh, now the election. And what's happening to this? Is Sube? They're taking all the prizes. Huh? Okay. Let us go to the second best prize. It's okay, Chinonye F. HLC, 50,000. Good day, everyone. My name is Odingwe Sylvia. I'm in SS2, and I'm coming from Doctors of the Bible of Junior Aid. My classmates and I came here to represent, um, represent our school in a competition, second bearer of Bishop Shanahan. And honestly, I wasn't expecting to, like, get to this extent because at the point the exam hall, I was kind of uncomfortable and had to go. But as God may have it, I've like passed and I'm very, very happy. I thank my school for recognizing me for my ability to read and write. I thank my family for their support for how much they've, they've encouraged me and guided me. And I thank my friends and everybody around me who encouraged me. I'm very, very happy to get this. And I pray that the, by the good grace of God, that I'll go out for more and win more. Thank you. Now you know. Now you know. Now you know. You know you know. Typical laws in town. Now you know. Now you know. Now you know. Now you know.
Uh, thank you so much with a hug, a sisterly hug. Thank you so much, sister. We now have to call the overall winner, the queen, the centenary queen, Holy Rosary College, Chukungazi. Chukungazi, and the mother is here. The mother is here. Chukungazi as next as the queen for 2024 centenary year. And she's going to be decorated by Reverend Sister Vicky Eze. Vicky Eze will do the red decoration. Hi, this is a young queen. This is a young queen. Oh, uh, Eze. Chuku, your, 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 your daughter is beautiful. <laughs> Kai. Ah, she's even wearing a queenly smile. Chuku <laughs> Ngozi, uh, being decorated by Sister Vicky Eze. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I hereby present the Queen for this centenary celebration to you all. She's none other than a keenly contested pageant. She made it, and she's the Queen for the year. Can we jam our hands together for this baby? Thank you so much. Beautiful. Congratulations. Yes. 
you will represent us at the next Commonwealth Olympic Games. On behalf of our congregational leader, Sister Frank Konyibo, and of course, the chief host, our regional leader, Sister Ife Mwe all the sisters worldwide, and the centenary committee, the staff, and the sisters. We wish to say a little thanks to each of you who have come to share in our joy. Thank you so much for making our time from your tight schedules to come and celebrate with us. And not just coming, you contributed immensely. Many have gone, but we are also extending our thanks to them. I know that they didn't come here, but they extended their kindness to us. We wish to thank all of them. And thank our priest, Father Raphael, the cathedral administrator, for staying on till now, and the mother of the day for staying on and for contributing hugely. Thank you so much. We thank all the students here, all the children and parents. May God bless you all as you leave from here, we pray and ask God to lead you safely to your different destinations. Thank you. Mighty name of Jesus Christ, what a successful day and the events. We are here to witness and be part of this centenary celebration. Our prayer point is that we shall be celebrated as centenary people. Let there be centenary life in us. We are going to be more than 80 and 90 and reach 100 and still be strong. For all those who made this event happen and busted, may God take all the glory. And as we are going back, may the angel of Psalm 91, 11, 12 accompany us. He said, I will send forth my angels to guard you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Galatians 6, 17 said, as we are going home, let nobody trouble us, because to bear the mark of Christ, Jesus Christ. As we are in the third week of Lent, very soon we celebrate the Easter, the victorious God. May victory accompany us home through Christ our Lord. May God Almighty bless us and bless the and plan this event and all of us who have come to be with them in solidarity for what God has done for these reverend sisters whose congregation has lasted 100 years. Let us count our blessings in hundred as we bless ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you all.
today I'm excited not really because my daughter won but first thing is that I said celebrating centenary centenary is hundred years and you discover in this part of the world that life expectancy is very low because of the hardship and everything so when you see anybody celebrating centenary it's something we need to tap into so I'm tapping into centenary life Tapping into for my children, for my son, for my daughters, for my husband as well, that they will live 100 years in good health. And that's number one thing I'm celebrating. And to crown it all, today my daughter emerged as the queen of the centenary. That's amazing. I'm so excited about that. And uh, finally, HRC is the school to be. I've encountered the product of HRC. I am a lecturer in a university and they do exceptionally well. It means they have the culture of excellence. And it means that if anybody has the culture of excellence, it's habitual. So what they're doing here, they're doing it well. I must thank the sisters, I must thank the principal, and the management of this institution for what they are doing. They should continue to do that in every of their endeavor. Thank you, and God bless you. I am Barrister Sly Ezio Kenwa, the national chairman of APGA. And then by the special grace of God, I equally functioned as the chairman of this occasion, this very noble occasion. Uh, this is just to send a very hearty congratulations to the missionary sisters of Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary on the celebration of their centenary anniversary, 100 years of its existence in Nigeria, not just in Nigeria, but world over. Of course, it's common knowledge that our missionary sisters of Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary was formed by his lordship, late Bishop Joseph Shanahan, you know, sometime in 1924, as a citadel or a congregation, uh, an association of young ladies who have decided to dedicate themselves to the service of God, you know. And over the years, they've continued to live to the tenets, you know, live up to the tenets of the ideals and objectives of the original founder of this congregation. And part of what, just like I said to do when I was, you know, doing my opening remark, part of what the missionary sisters of Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary has been able to achieve has been its vocational and charitable work over the years. I recall with nostalgia that sometime during the Civil War, that through the instrumentality of the missionary sisters of the Holy of the uh, Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary, relief materials were, you know, you know, shared or got to most people within the Biafran territory why the, the Nigerian Civil War was raging on. So for me, that's a very noble one. 
And I say that one of the innovative achievement of this congregation is the establishment of educational or schools of higher learning, both lower and higher learning all over the country. Predominantly, or you know, most popularly, or, you know, the Holy Rosary College, which is the venue of the centenary celebration. So for me, it's, it's one that I recall with much excitement and elation that this noble congregation is celebrating its 100 years of its existence. So I say a very worthy and a huge congratulations to the missionary sisters of Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary and urge them to continue to live up to its tenets, to the ideals and objectives of their father founder. They've said so many things they are involved in, charitable works, you know, vocational studies and all whatnot. And like I said, my political party, the All Progressive Grand Alliance, which is the foremost progressive party in Nigeria, will continue to partner with any organization, any association, any congregation that is there for the advancement of humanity. So once more, I say a huge congratulation, and I wish them many, 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 many more years. My name is Estes Ovea and Valua Cosmos Eze. Uh, my daughter and other daughters, they are in this school. Uh, I was compelled to be here by my daughter, Ada Chukweze. And uh, she's currently in the SS3. She handed over as a house captain in this very school. I have to grace the occasion to appreciate the school, the management of the school for the good work they are doing in terms of child upbringing, <laughs> tutoring, counseling, and bringing the young ones to grow in the path of morality and God. It's a big plus for the school and uh, I must give them that credit. The morals is there, the standards is there, and the zeal to appreciate education is there. The discipline is there. And uh, I commend the school. I recommend them to anybody who wish his or her child well. My name is Professor Pascal Okolie. I've come here to be part of the celebration marking the 100 years anniversary of Missionary Sisters of the Holy Rosary. Incidentally, my cousin, Reverend Sister Annen Ugwako, is a member of the congregation. Uh, Holy Rosary has been an old school that has mentored a lot of people and are still mentoring people. They have defined what training should be in society. As a result, they need all the support they can get. That's why we came here in our numbers to render all the support that is necessary for the progress of uh, the congregation. 100 years is not 100 days. They have spent, they spent quite a lot of time in Nigeria from 2024 to date. On that note, we have come here to support them and show our solidarity. We wish that God will continue to bless their work for the good of better, uh, future generations. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. My name is Dr. Mrs. Uche Uguja. I am a medical doctor, a consultant, and family medicine. I am here on invitation. The person that invited me actually was the principal of the school, Reverend Sister Obi Uguja, who is also my sister-in-law. So she invited me here to come and witness the occasion, give support for the building of the refectory at Nsuka, and also to just hang around in the Enugu, and I'm happy to be here. Apart from that connection, my mother was a student of Holy Rosary School way back in 1977, and it's my honor I came with her. She's somewhere in the crowd. So I'm happy to be here. I'm coming all the way from Abuja to Enugu, and uh, I'm so happy. I'm happy to be a part of this beautiful location. I love Holy Rosary School because it teaches the ideal of education. Look at how the girls are looking. So well packaged, very neat from head to toe. Teaching them how to walk like a woman, talk like a lady, and so on and so forth. I really love this occasion. It's well packaged, beautiful, so 
well attended with a lot of dignitaries and a lot of dreams for our children and for the humanity. I only wish them well. I wish they achieve what they have come out, what they set out to achieve. 100 years of existence is something else, is a, is a wow. So I'm really happy to be here and I know God will continue to bless them and give them many more years to celebrate. I wish Sister Obi, the principal of the school, my sister-in-law the best. Look at how this place is looking, transformed over the past two, three years. She's a, she's a, she's a, she's a, get, a go-getter. She's the best. And I wish her many more years as a principal and so many more achievements for herself and for Holy Rosary School. Thank you. Today has ended in praise and uh, I am very grateful to God. I can't believe, I can't believe that today is over. Uh, it, it seems like a dream. We have prepared and prepared and prepared. But I know that uh, I know that if not for God, it will not go the way it went. So I give glory to God, first and foremost, for making this day what it has ended to be. And I also thank the committee members, both the lay committee and the, and the sisters committee. Everybody worked with utmost commitment and everybody was working with joy. We worked with one mind and with one heart. And all the sisters in this region collaborated so well. Everybody was willing to do anything that would make this day successful. And uh, it is like a celebration of our unity together. I am so excited to see the end of this day. I am so happy. My joy is indescribable. Sister Catherine Asomoya, a Holy Rosary sister, living in Onicha. And today we are here for this wonderful celebration. Celebrating a hundred years of our, of our congregation. We were founded, as we have heard so many times today, we were founded in 1924. And this year we are exactly 100 years old. We are grateful that the Lord has kept us so far and we believe that His mercy will accompany us the rest of the way. So we started off in Ireland. We came back to, we came to Nigeria. After the foundation, we, the first group of sisters came down here to Nigeria in 1928. And since then we have been working here, teaching, nursing, doing social work, but above all, trying to do what Christ has asked us to do, to proclaim the good news, to proclaim the good news, to evangelize the people, to tell them the great love God has for his children. And we do that by our either words or actions. Whatever we are doing, that it will be proclaiming Christ. The Holy Rosary sisters, therefore, are missionaries. They have been chosen and sent to proclaim that good news, that God our Father is love, and that he sent Jesus Christ as our Redeemer and our Savior. He came. He lived a very humble and holy life. He preached the goodness of God. He did his utmost to help people to observe the ordinances of God, to learn how to love. In the end, he was accused of breaking the, the rules and the laws, particularly that he walked on the Sabbath. And with that accusation, he was killed, nailed to the cross, and he died. But on the third day, he rose again. The Holy Rosary Sisters are doing their utmost to proclaim that good news, that Jesus died and rose again, and that we are all part of his, his history. 
I am Sister Nkiru Ebo, a Holy Rosary sister, working with our young women in the novices as the novice directress. In fact, it has been so wonderful. As you can see, all faces are smiling, the faces are shining, giving praise to God because it has been so wonderful. We didn't regret any effort we put in to prepare for this event. Celebrating 100 years of our existence. All of us, all the sisters, especially the sisters of southern Nigeria, every single person utilized her gifts, her time. Sisters, we are valuable to do one or two things to be able to get to this event and i tell you from the beginning of this celebration till the end it was all heartwarming everybody was well energized myself i am very very happy to be part of this epoch event this centenary we know that many of our sisters who started the congregation whom we are also celebrating at this time the late powerful legacy for us and ourselves we are privileged to be part of those that are celebrating this centenary so we thank god and we cannot thank him enough and also to thank all our collaborators all our sisters our congregational leader and anywhere we are in the whole world so we extend our kind regards to them and all of us are celebrating today and we cannot say much than to say Thank you, Jesus, for making this day worthwhile. Thank you, our founder, Bishop Joseph Shanahan, for being a great man, man of vision. And thank you so much, our early sisters, for even staying on to energize us, because their spirits, we are with us today. If not, we will not have been this wonderful. So thank you so much. I am Sister Obiageli Obuja. By God's grace, I am the sister serving here in HRC, one in Nugu, as a principal. <sighs> I feel so happy, excited, elated. I don't even know how to describe how I feel, but I know I feel so happy. Fantastic, everything went so well. My shout out to everybody is just to say well done to all of us that I've done so well preparing for this centenary and that God will bless each and every one of them. I know that this celebration will bring us joy, bring us happiness, will bring us many more years ahead.